Hey guys, welcome to episode three of the Hail Mary podcast. Today I have MMA fighter, blogger, and overall a really awesome person, Ben Forsyth. Ben, how are you? I am excellent, yeah. I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm very well. I was waiting and anticipating Ben's arrival today. Uh, he was a little <laughs> delayed. He Maybe he was busy making amazing cappuccinos. Was that why you were late today? I was busy getting amazing cappuccinos from a place I used to work in, so close enough. <laughs> Although I'm not much of a cappuccino drinker, I'm more of a flat white guy. Ooh, flat right. I'm more of a just uh, uh, put the black coffee in my goddamn cup. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that sometimes. Morning, I'm that. <laughs> I, I know when I go to the La Guillotine Cafe over at the SBG Ireland that uh, – yeah. That I'm probably the only person who really gets Americanos, and they've renamed them just for me. Really? Yes, they've named them Americanos because everybody appears to get either tea or just a a regular brewed coffee. But I'm fancy like that. I need Americano. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's living up to it. Canada is just the capital of America, isn't it? Well, we are, we are basically <laughs> the the refined and. Uh, they're, yeah. they're, we're the refined version of, of what America one day hopefully can be. Okay. <laughs> I'm so, sure they appreciate So, Ben, we are uh, – I've been fascinated with this new blog that you started. But just before we get into that, um, yeah. I was watching some of your highlights from uh, some of your fights today and some of the interviews uh, leading up to this. Uh, yeah. I can't remember the exact opponent. They didn't have his name listed. But god damn, where did you get your style for all these uh, really amazing kicks? Like you're you're throwing shit in an amateur belt that I I, I don't see anybody doing other than the basic one twos takedown and grapple uh, grapple somebody. Yeah. Where did your base come from? Uh, taekwondo. I started taekwondo when I was five, I think. Um, so that's where all my spinning kicks came from. I used to only focus on doing flashy kicks and jumps and. Um, back when I thought that that was effective, <laughs> but uh, I, I definitely it's good to carry it across the MMA. But um, as a, as an art by itself, it's not overly effective. Obviously, you'd know that. Um, but it's great to uh, to carry across into MMA. Definitely, I think anything that keeps your 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 arsenal diverse and, and unpredictable is something that is uh, is huge. Because I mean, yeah, your fellow teammate Conor McGregor. Uh, is somebody who who uses them. He now he 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 definitely doesn't use them with the uh, with the the intent of of knocking you out more so than he uses them to set up his, to get to his boxing, cut the yeah. uh, cut the distance and, and, and work on the inside. But uh, but damn, you hit the guy with a the guy was wearing white shorts. I can't remember which fight it was, but you hit him with a spinning back kick, and, yeah, and it was we, just beautiful. Because just before that, you had thrown in well in the highlights, so who knows how it was edited, but you threw an axe kick. Yeah, yeah, that was a nice fight. That was a good fight. Um, wow. Yeah, I love. I, to be honest, I don't throw them enough because they're my. Uh, for me, right now, I would consider my wrestling against the cage and my kicks are my strongest assets. And uh, wrestling, I'm starting to use a lot more, um, which I, I didn't use. I used to shy away from it because I thought, mm -hmm. oh, I did taekwondo, oh, I did stand up. I might as well just stand up with these guys. And then after coming out of a lot of three round fights with my shins in two pieces i was like maybe i should start wrestling because it's way easier a way easier night for myself um but I, yeah i really don't kick enough and it's something that like pa like the likes of paddy would i remember the last fight i had um which was kind of a controversial decision paddy was in my corner with tommy you know at the irish cycle yeah, uh, yeah well my man and uh basically I, I think in the third round i hit the guy with like a jumping like right kick to the outside leg left kick to the head like a double kind of, it's like a taekwondo mm -hmm, kick as well. Mm -hmm. uh, completely uh, rocked him. And Paddy, after the fight, basically said, do you see that kick you threw? Throw 10 of them. <laughs> so um, that's that's pretty much his uh, opinion on that. So throw more and then um, I'd be a lot happier, yeah. Yeah, if you're going to listen to anybody, I think having Paddy Houlihan in your corner is uh, is definitely somebody who, who, who can see what you should and shouldn't be doing in many ways. I mean... He's got that yeah. big fight with Louis Smolka coming up at uh, UFC Dublin, and, and, and I can't wait for that one, especially with how um, wide open that flyweight division is now. He, he could sneak up there pretty quickly with a huge win there. Yeah, he really – yeah. 
you're right there and um it's yeah i think the path is open from there string together like one or two more even and yep. that's it yeah. no for, for sure for sure now your your record is is deceiving because it i the way i look at it is you'll see people like artem who at, at last count i saw i think he's 10 and 10 but i i think if you don't actually read the stat lines on those fights artem pretty much fought people on uh, any day's notice at different weight classes and even though that that fight I mean you were saying it in the interview with um, uh, win or learn uh, yeah. was something that, that John Cavanaugh the coach at SBG Ireland stresses and, yeah. and Artem must have taken that to uh, to the literal point where he fought as much as he could maybe yeah. business wise most people be like you know, uh, let's not do that one. You've only had three days, <laughs> three days notice, yeah. but it's something that you you definitely. I, I know latter or earlier this year, latter part of last year, you were trying to fight literally every single day. It seemed like trying to get something going. Yeah, it was because I had so long with nothing uh, training at SPG, and then all of a sudden it all came out. But I, so I was always ready and always. And there's good and bad things about doing that. Um, you know, I think everyone at SPG now is trying to be a bit more uh, intelligent about taking fights in that manner. It's it's a weird one because your ego can get in the way. And obviously, if you're if you're a martial artist and you're especially if you're in the gym that we're in, surrounded by the people we're surrounded by, you want to fight every day. You want to be like, oh, I don't want to say proving yourself, but it is kind of that. You're you, you know, we're not afraid to fight. We we love it. That's why we're there. Mm -hmm. um, it is hard. Like sometimes your ego can get in the way, and you're like, "I don't care about my weight. I don't care about this. I don't care about. I have. I was out last night, but I'll take the fight and fight tomorrow, kind of thing." And but I suppose that's what amateur is for, and that's that's. But in Artem's case, um, yeah, professional, um, maybe maybe making more decisive decisions or decisive decisions. I'm not sure that's a a thing, but um, more more intelligent decisions. I'm not sure. Like he. Yeah, but you can look at his stats and then look at him, and then it, it, doesn't, it completely doesn't correlate because he's uh, he's a, he's an animal, um, and he's a super nice guy as well. Yeah, I, I know firsthand. I remember we were doing some sparring at my second trip over there, and he caught me with a, a beautiful right over the top. My my jaw, I never had been punched that 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 hard, but with and I, I know for him that probably wasn't even one of his hardest punches, but his. his his ability, the, his ability to read things now is, is just always growing, especially with Connor, because Connor is his, their main training partners, and, and then you can see how Connor reads a fight. You can see Artem is just it exactly has to be that much smarter to outsmart, if not the best 145 pounder, if not one of the top fighters easily in the world today. Yeah, it's like exactly, um, that's exactly right, and if you're not. If you're not judging stuff right with Connor, you're gonna know about it. So you gotta you gotta learn, you gotta learn pretty fast when he's your main training partner. Um, so I, I can't. It's not a surprise that Artem has come on so much, and I can't wait to see him in the Ultimate Fighter. Um, it's gonna be pretty awesome. Yeah, just so if anyone knows, uh, Artem, uh, Connor McGregor's main training partner and training partner for all the guys that are at SBG. It's not like there's cliques where uh, guys are left out, but uh, September 9th is when the new season, The Ultimate Fighter, does debut, and Artem will be on there, as well as uh, as Carl Tanswell, Sal Rogers uh, will yeah. be on that one as well. So two SBGers on that one. Yeah, Sal Rogers, he's also uh, awesome as well. Um, so it's going to be it's gonna be good. And I'm, I'm really intrigued to see, uh, not relating to SBG, but I'm really intrigued to see Ryan Hall, uh, how yeah. he gets as well. That's a pretty, pretty interesting one. I was surprised yeah. with this record. I saw that it was 4-1. I... I, I I, I got to spend some time. It seems like there's fights every damn weekend now, and it, and especially with the uh, with the uh, concert season uh, this past summer for myself, doing a lot of event security. I haven't had a chance to catch some of the fights, but uh, I yeah. got to check out. I got I got to for sure uh, spend some time and and watch Ryan Hall's MMA and and, and see where it's at and see. And as a fan, I mean, obviously, uh, yeah. I want I want to see um, how he does against all the other guys. There's a lot of guys on there who we we aren't going to know. Until we watch yeah. the series, and, and you know, with a lot of those those Europeans, uh, there seems to be a fight card every weekend. So who knows where some of these guys stand? But I'm very interested in learning about all everybody on that season. Yeah, yeah, I, the trailer is pretty um 
pretty exciting. <laughs> uh, that guy we saw we saw Connor getting a bit pushed, and although Connor being Connor, he loved it and <laughs> he embraces that kind of shit. So, uh, oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be probably the most interesting. Connor's breaking numbers for fights. I think he's gonna break numbers for TV as well for uh, for the Ultimate Fighter as well because I kind of trailed trailed off a bit. Um, I think people's interest in the Ultimate Fighter because there's so many. There's like there's Ultimate Fighter shows that I've, no one even knew what was on, and then you just suddenly hear there's a final. You're like, what what's going on? So uh, I say this one is gonna be um, definitely up there. Well, especially now because there's there especially and, and and speaking of about what we were talking about just moments before about um being a little more business savvy and, and picking your fights because of, of, especially for you guys from SPG Ireland, everything is, is now heavily viewed. Records, yeah. uh, um, exposure, you guys are heavily uh, featured on Severe MMA, which is one yeah. of the, the larger websites and blogs out there for European fighters. So everything yeah. now has to be a lot more calculated. and Yeah. And, 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 and that's a tough thing to do. And, and going back to the Ultimate Fighter, a lot of the guys are not going to be doing this the show if they think that they might get exposed in front of that many fans. Yeah. Uh, and as, as well, it's, 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 they think they'd rather go out the route and, and go straight direct to, to the UFC by building themselves up. Yeah. I know. It's, it's a tough one. I don't know if it's something that – I don't know. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And so that being said, if I had the opportunity, I think I would do it because I know it's only a w- once in a lifetime. Now, I have heard that it's, it's a really hard process from mm-hmm. Chris and Paul and Ash and stuff. I, I know it's quite mentally trying. Um, so it would be a big decision to make, but uh, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, uh, for, especially for – okay, because if, if I was – I mean, if I was your manager – yeah, and, and if you want to pay me a percentage, I will take it. I'm not going to argue, but yeah. for but especially for you being four and four, um, it might be an excellent way uh, 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 of knocking off that that idea that oh he's four and four, he's five hundred, and, and especially we know how MMA records look much different yeah. than boxing, right? I mean, you'll have a guy who's fifty eight and ten, he's won yeah. fifty fights against nobody, but the ten he's lost against the guys who are proven with a track record. Yeah. yeah. And there's no easy fight. I mean, they call it amateur MMA out there in many ways. I'm watching yeah. those fights. The only difference is that you guys don't get a fight purse, but that's not amateur. Yeah, there's no difference. There's like there's a little bit of padding and, um, yeah, no pay. <laughs> that's that's it. That's you know, difference. you know what you know what I mean. And and and, and you'll especially in Ontario, MMA is basically frowned upon here. So we're really picking our, 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 our spots, and I'm hoping to finally get a belt booked for the end of the year to early, mid-next year. Yeah. But it, it, when I watched over here compared to you guys, I'm like, you. by the time you guys are, are, are pro, you, yeah. you've already had you know up to, to 12, to, to 12 yeah. uh, amateur fights in many ways, especially like James Gallagher for many ways. Yeah. God, I don't, I don't even know how many fights that guy's have, but he's been fighting since he's out of the womb. So, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. amazing. Like he was, uh, unfortunately, he got injured. He won't be on that that huge Bama yeah. uh, twenty two card there. But I mean, yeah. it, it for him. I mean, there, 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 there's no there's no rush for him. No, he no that dude is going like he's going places. So it it does not matter. Um, when or where, as long as it happens, he's he's gonna he's gonna get up there. He just has that same mentality that mm-hmm. all the top guys kind of have. And um, yeah, there's a few other like I'm really sad about that for they doesn't get the fight on it. But there's a lot of other good debuts yeah. like Dylan, Dylan Duke, who I can't wait to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, Franz, the Black Mamba, gonna gonna mess mess. I, lo- I love I love that guy. Uh, for- Every time I see him, he does not look like a, a guy who's on the verge of being a very good professional fighter. Because you'll see him will show up in sweatpants, baggy shirts, and just kind of just yeah. walk on and always just yeah. smiling and, and nonchalant. But then you'll see him in the cage, and he's just – He is crazy. Yeah. yeah, he just is relentless. Uh, and, yeah, he's, he's the nicest guy ever. And then he just mm. cleans, cleans people out with no – like just oh, just nothing in his eyes just kind of oh it's strange it's very strange seeing your teammate who's just super nice and like I, I gave him a lift home from from sparring there the other day and like you know he's saying th- just how nice he was he was like okay love you brother see you later da, da, da. and i'm like this guy just annihilates yeah. people for, 
for for his job now, which is so it's. He's crazy. a he's a special he's a very special case because yeah. it's like when I watch Gunner Gunner fight or train. There seems to be the um, the effort is a hundred and ten percent, but the expenditure on his body and mentally, it, it, he never seems spent. No, not not at all. He's just um, yeah. Usually he's usually asleep. To be honest, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's, he's not, like before fights, he just sleeps, wakes up, gets his hands wrapped, goes out and does the job. And he's really co- he's really funny. Um, like he's notorious for you know kind of not being there all the time, but then coming in and getting the job done when he needs to. Yeah. And I remember one one day I was like doing pads with Roddy, I think, in, in the ring, and I looked down. There was a full striking class. And this is just France trying to get in training in fight week. So there's a full striking class. And I look down, there's this guy in, in, a, in a gi with a hoodie underneath with, with the hood up, just doing sit-ups in the middle of a, of a striking class. I was just like, this dude is just something special. Um, he's, oh, he's crazy. But he gets it. That's the thing. He gets it done when he needs to get it done. He's, he's cutting the weight. That's why he's wearing a gi with the hoodie. And he's yeah. doing... You no, know, he's trying to, trying to expand as much energy as possible and get the weight down. And he just always gets it done and always gets the results. So, yeah, he, really him. he could easily be the biggest, if, if, if everything keeps going to plan, he could easily be the biggest star out of that gym without yeah. even trying, just based yeah. on how everybody else views him. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I love that because he's like, he's, he's just, yeah, it's like he would be the biggest star just for being himself. And that's, that's quite a special thing. To, like he's, to, he's just doing him. He's just being himself. He's just doing yeah. him. He's not worried about anything else. Literally, exactly. you, you, when you look at him, you think that his mind is in this, is in this, is out there in the clouds, not thinking about anything. But there's, yeah. there's, there's definitely a cerebral thought behind his training. Oh yeah, hundred percent. He's, he's, he's hungry. Like he's definitely hungry. Mm. Um, he's for something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what motivates him. I haven't really spoke to him. I just. It's yeah, it's almost kind of like an existential Franz that we see, but there's something under there. There's something under there, definitely. It's a, it's like he's he, he it's like he doesn't even comprehend or is very aware of uh, of what he's he's actually doing inside that cage. Yeah, yeah. he's he's very humble as well. Have you spoken to him much? He's he's extremely extremely humble and modest. Very very modest guy, and I love that. I love that. Like. Yeah, he just like I said, he just does himself. He doesn't. He doesn't give two fucks. Yeah, he's just, just he's just France. He's just France. So, do you have anything scheduled coming up, fight wise? Because I know it's been a little quiet. I know you've been focused on other uh, other goals, and we'll go, we'll get to that in just a moment. But do you have anything lined up, fight wise, at the moment? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to compete in the European uh, Championships in November in in Birmingham. So that's all. I'm just kind of well. Right now, I've, I've um, I'm taking yeah time to focus on other stuff like we said, but that's my next thing. Is the I think the trials are on an SPG in October. Uh, I'm gonna go in a light heavyweight, um, just because the same day weigh ins and mm-hmm. um and I'm so I'm like spending a lot of time in the gym trying to bulk up a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you're just seemingly bigger like physically than 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 I imagined. Because I remember you were actually the first guy I trained with at one of John's MMA. Uh, um, uh, we were doing positional drilling uh, practice one yeah. night. You were the first guy who came over and said, "Hey, come train with, come, we'll, we'll drill together." And, yeah. and I remember seeing you then, compared to seeing you just in your 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 fights. You, you're you're quite bigger than you appear. What are you weighing in? What's your height? Uh, well, I'm six three, uh, height wise, um, but I usually slouch. I suppose I'm trying to downplay it a bit. Uh, and now, right now. I'm weighing at about 95 kilos, which is the heaviest I've ever been in my life. Um, Cause I used to, I was cutting, this is only recently in the past few weeks. Like I was, I was cutting maybe from 89 down to 84 for middleweight. Okay. So it was nothing, not much. Um, but the guys are, are, are quite big in middleweight. You know, Chris Fields is a middleweight for, for Christ's sake. Like, so um, once you move around with him, you know, he's always saying this to me. He's like, this is what a real middleweight looks like. Uh, with his top off, just kind of looking at me. So I uh, decided to try and put on a bit of weight. And then, and then it, it kind of makes sense now to, to just do the Europeans at, at light heavyweight because it's yeah. like at its same day weigh-ins. And John said I'd be crazy to try and get down to middle and fight at middle when I'm walking around now at like 94, 95. And I'm trying to go up even higher, to be honest, because, um, you know, well, while not sacrificing speed. So it's tough, Like, but I got some... 
I got some good guys I'm working with. Um, and so I'm just going through a kind of a bulking, shredding kind of mm-hmm. old, um, German volume training. Muscle so leaning like, out, yeah. Yeah, so it's all it's ten like a hundred reps of everything, and it's so it's putting on the size like I put on like five kilos in the past three four weeks, I think. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's it's a different. Because like, thing. it's rare over there because you, Chris, uh, Chris Fields, and 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 yeah. Pendred are are probably three of the biggest guys there, other than Big Ken. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And there's, there's a few new guys who are quite big as well. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we would be. Uh, me, Chris. And we had Keen Arat, who's, who's actually he's, he's moved to Dubai now for the year, so I'm not sure what's really going on with him. Yeah. Um, but um, who else do we have? There's some big guys, like Connor in his own right. Is, even though he's smaller, he, he feels bigger. <laughs> um, he's, and, he's physically imposed. Like, he is mad. Like, when I... When you think, when you look at him, you think this guy fights at one forty-five, and we've seen the weigh-ins. I mean, it, he does. He he really he really cuts down to get down mm-hmm. there. Um, uh, and we all have our own thoughts on on, on weight cutting, but I mean, the results yeah. speak for themselves. So the proof's in the pudding. But yeah, uh, yeah he is not he's not a small guy. But at one seventy, no. he's a massive one seventy. Yeah, he, like he and he is normally one set. I think uh, anyway. He, he, from what he's told me, he's, he's about one seventy when he's, and you can feel it. Like you, you can definitely feel it. Anyway, yeah. But so he doesn't have a problem with the big guys. But yeah, it's like me, Chris, and Carl. There's a few other guys like Johnny, da- Johnny the Dragon, Dargan yeah. is quite a, a big. Char- Charlie Ward is by no means uh, small either. So uh, we've got enough. We've got enough big guys. We've got some new, a few new guys on the team and stuff now as well. So. Yeah, I remember Charlie choking me out with a uh, with a forearm on a, on a stack pass. So uh, I'm yeah, very yeah. familiar with how, how powerful some of those um, those rugby and, uh, and and Gaelic football guys are. They, I mean, though, and and that's an interesting. I would love to bring that up with you. Now, you're a very good athlete, regardless of how much you blush and you try to be humble. You're a very good athlete. <laughs> now, and this was something that I was thinking about the other day. I was wondering how much the sport might change if we start seeing some of those Division One football players instead of going those those, those athletes at that level who come yeah. into jiu-jitsu and MMA. That is something that I, I cannot wait to see if it does happen. I mean, not many people want to get punched in the face for you know for a living when they can just. But then again, when you compare it to, to American football, yeah, uh, it, it's 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 you know. They they have their own their own costs uh, for your body, but yeah, it's something that I'm very interested in seeing because there's been a lot of fighters. I mean, just for for example, Chris Lehman, very yeah. he's he's a fighter through and through. That's what he was meant to do. But then you'll have freak athletes like Phil Davis, who are yeah. who are just genetic, athletic freaks. Yeah. Do you guys have a lot of that over there? People who 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 come from other sports and flourish because of that background. Well, you have people like Cahill who came from rugby, um, and I, because I do, I do coaching as well. And and any any rugby player that comes in, I find really um, comes across quite well into into MMA because they have the same kind of mentality that that you need. Is uh, they're really good at getting people down, obviously, um, but they just got that kind of you know balls to the wall, get the job done kind of thing that Cahill has. Just kind of. Um, so I think rugby players are, is probably our equivalent of your American football players or whatever you have over there. And then, um, so yeah, there's a good few rugby guys who come in, or even GAA guys are quite quite tough. Like we have McGinney, uh you mm-hmm. in class with him. Like he's like he's no joke either. I, although he's a bit of an anomaly. Um, but yeah, definitely rugby guys. I see a, a good few rugby guys. A lot of them don't stick around because, like you said, it's probably it's a lot easier to not get punched in the face. Yeah. But I can definitely see, like, if, if everyone was had the same determination as, say, Cahill and, and his same background, and I definitely think rugby would be, if I, if I could take anyone from any sport and then try and turn them into MMA fighters, I would take a rugby team. Um, and just and definitely. Uh, I, although I know as, as kind of athletics guys do the best uh, across the board. Um, gymnasts, I think. Um, I think they did some study. The gymnasts kind of came across best. Um, I, I like cross training, but I still think I would take for the mentality was I take some rugby players. 
Yeah, now speaking about, well, as you we were talking about people with the cost of your body, I mean, you, you are paying a price anytime you're doing a contact sport. What age did you start? What, what age were you at when you had your first uh, MMA bout? Uh, I was um, I was 18, I think. So I was late enough coming yeah. in, to be honest. Yeah, 18 is like is late. When you look at like Franz or, or Chuk, although, yeah, I don't know what Chuk, probably 17 or 16 for him, but yeah, 18. And then I had, I think I had two fights and I just, and I didn't do anything for a, few, for a good while. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just going through loads of injuries and different, like I opened up a club, um, my, my own uh, club in, in my area and just kind of didn't work out after about a year, just funds and all that kind of stuff. And then yeah. moved to Australia for a while. I was li living in Melbourne. Um, then, then I came back and that's when I joined SVG and stuff. So that, and then I pretty much had like six, seven fights or something in the past eight months or some nine months or something. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's why I'm taking a little break now. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and what, what's cool about that is can compare to some of the guys that Jim having your first bout at 18 is, is a rarity. It seems like they try to get, uh, promoters, uh, try to get some of those kids in as early as possible. Because I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Gallagher had his first fight at like 13 years of age. Yeah, I think it was like a teen fight, whatever. I'm not sure what the rules were or anything. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was, yeah, about 13. That's what he, yeah. that's what he said anyway. So, And I think he had a few, a good few. Yeah. But John, John obviously disagreed with that as well and, 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 you know, kind of took him under his wing and asked mm -hmm. him not to fight Again, until he was, I think, seventeen, or I'm not sure what the age was, but because John's a pretty smart guy, so you can see that yeah. it's not the best to be to be in there from that age. Like, cause like you said, every single bit of of contact is taking away your brain cells, and you know you want to try and minimize that as much as you can and be really intelligent about it. So, well, for sure. I mean, uh, John even spoke about this at one of the uh, spring camps that we had at SBG Niagara. And he even said, you know, Connor is, 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 is getting in there, making as much money as he can, enjoying the moment. But yeah. as soon as he starts seeing that, that there's diminishing returns towards, you know, his, his, his thoughts and uh, his speech patterns and stuff, that, he'll, he, he won't, he, that he wouldn't want any of his fighters, Connor doesn't matter, he wouldn't want yeah. any of those guys to, to, to sacrifice, you know, a, a healthy life after. Yeah, no way. And, and that's something SPG... And that's why I love the the grappling aspect because we they don't shy away from the boxing and all that stuff. That that's a necessity, but yeah, they know that you can save a lot more brain cells with a very strong grappling game. And and and, and that's one of the reasons why I love the SPG philosophy because it is the truth. You are going to end up in a clinch against the fence on the ground. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, and this is something I'm realizing lately. Because coming from a striking background, I was and your ego kind of gets in the way. I'm like, I'm going to strike with everyone because everyone thinks I'm a striker, and then just just kind of not not thinking enough. But then I've had, I don't know if it's because I'm doing a lot of different things lately. Um, maybe just the kind of, I don't know, maybe the carrying across. But I'm really a lot more analytical now about about everything. Um, and I'm just trying to like grappling seems to be the the most intelligent way to approach fighting. Uh, for that reason, um, and for just effectiveness um yeah. i think it's like you can you can take the fight wherever you want. if you really work in your grappling you can take the fight wherever you want and make it a, a short night or a long night or you know um an mm -hmm. easy night so um it's something that i've definitely i'm definitely shifting to more towards the grappling end um which i know isn't isn't overly great for um for you know spectator point of view but if you're like gunny it still looks pretty goddamn impressive when you, oh, uh, you for know, sure. Control. When you're aggressive towards the finish, it, and that's the ignorance of, of of people who don't ever train, who who are too afraid to ever be on the losing end of of a fight. And I mean, hey, no, everybody wants to fight, kick ass. Not everyone yeah. wants to get their, not everyone's willing to get their ass kicked once in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And I've had so many fights now when when I can barely walk out of the place. You know, and and it's just from kicks, and it's just you can't avoid it. Like you're kicking, you checking kick or like checking kicks. Your shins are getting destroyed. You might slightly get out of range for a head kick, and your toes hit them instead of your foot, and then your toes are messed up, and you can't walk for for like a week or two. Um, every, like, and then the last fight I had, um, I I my game plan was was pressure until he, you know, 
got got made a mistake and then and then wrestle. And I did that, and I and I and I stuck to that game plan for the entire three rounds, and I and I walked out of there like I just got out of bed. Yeah. So just just from just from pure wrestling, and you know, so when I did that, and I, although I didn't get the decision in that fight, um, which which was you know, uh, no, no point talking about it, but um, I I really felt that I you know learned made it made a, a notable kind of jump in my in my game. Yeah. Um, figuring out what what my what my style is and um so yeah now does wrestling. it ever go ahead keep going <laughs> no i was gonna say wrestling is good that, that's it yeah yeah no for sure obviously i mean it, yeah. it's because i i found when i first got into it i i, I was pulling guard a, i mean especially for example for jujitsu but as soon as i start really working on my uh on my uh, wrestling yeah, it, yeah. It just it, it gives you it's like a knockdown punch in many ways because you have that nobody wants to be taken down. It's it, it nobody wants to be picked up and slammed. It's like yeah. It's it's a it's male uh, ego. It's ego regardless. You know, it, it it's one of those things. It's like fuck when you hit the ground, and in that exact moment that you have your opponent go oh fuck is when you're yeah. right away passing the guard, right away yeah. in the side control mount whatever it is. It's just it, it it's it's as nice as a knockout punch. Without yeah. damaging your hand. Yeah, I, I, exactly, and I love it. Like I, I'm really, really loving wrestling lately. I just, uh, it's so methodical. I don't know. I can't, I can't explain it. But I'm having so much clarity against against the cage and wrestling and, and grappling in general. Everything's slowing down, and I'm just, you know, feeling where people's weight are, and I'm getting much more satisfaction out of out of. You know, feeling that someone's weight is slightly on one side and then tripping that leg out from underneath them than I've ever gotten from, you know, hitting someone with a jab or, or a kick or, um, and, I, and I'm, I'm not, you know, when you hit someone, you're impacting yourself as well. Whereas yeah. when it's wrestling, you're, you're kind of just, you, they're taking all the force almost. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, it's much nicer. Um, well, yeah, you're using your bones to hit bone. Yeah, exactly. So when you, you think know. about it, yeah, you're kind of both suffering. Obviously, you're not. But it's taken something. It's definitely impact. So it's um, whereas wrestling, it's kind of nice. You just kind of move around a person and you know throw them to the ground, and it's great. Did you get a chance to watch the fights from last night at USC at uh, 191? I haven't. I just saw the Lineker and um, oh, who's he fighting? Uh, uh, oh, I can't. Even, was it Francisco Rivera? Was that the one? I think it might have been out. Like that? I like the, the last thing. It was like 100 strikes thrown in in like. A few seconds or something, it was crazy. Yeah. There, that main event. God damn, Demetrius Johnson is a is a wizard. He did. I I I swear, I wish he was just 145 pounds and up because he'd be the biggest star. Yeah, it's it's sad, isn't it? It's 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 so weird. It's just he's so good. Wait till you watch the fight. It's it's amazing. His 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 shot, his speed. And his yeah. it's his technique at that speed. It's like watching an F sixteen pilot in the, yeah. in the U in the U S Air Force. It's it's literally he's making he is doing things that don't even seem possible but are possible. He, he him in transition is is just a, a phenom. Like he, yeah. the way he switch, switches his trans. Like I think that him it, it's all about his transitions and they're just flawless. Uh, that guy just like up down like level changes like like nothing. Take him down, switch to striking, switch back to wrestling. Do, like he's just so good. And he literally he doesn't telegraph a goddamn thing. He he, oh. you don't the fans don't see it at first. Even if you're watching and you know what you're watching, you don't even know what he's gonna do. Yeah. And his opponent is it was seemed like he was stuck in mud. And, and Dodson's a motherfucker. He ain't he ain't no slouch. He is he yeah. knocks out everybody, and he is faster than anybody. But by the yeah. third round, uh, Money Mouse just absolutely had him in, in a clinic, and it was footwork. It was every time he was left orthodox to southpaw, just yeah. avoiding every. He it was it was it was masterful. It was yeah. one of the best performances I had ever seen was last night, and I I hate the fact that he is not up there with with on the same pedestal as, as Connor, John Jones, and the, and Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Those people, he should he has to be. Yeah, well, didn't Dana agree that he was the best pound for pound after last night? Dana, I think, made a statement saying that he is the best pound for pound. 
Well, I mean, they're, they're talking about they're talking about Jose. I mean, with all due respect with Jose Aldo, uh, you know, to give the guy his dues, he's an amazing fighter. There is no question about his legacy. But God damn, I mean, if, if Dodds is not above him, it's, it's an absolute joke. God, I'm sorry, my yeah. apologies. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse yeah. is never injured, fights anybody. Oh, he just happens to be in one of the weakest divisions in terms of depth. Yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. And, like, yeah, if you comp compare um, his fights to Aldo's, like, past few fights especially, like, you definitely think that, you know, he's, he's above Aldo in the, in the pound for pound. There, no, there's right. never a contest, and every time we see Aldo since his WEC days, there, there we are seeing chinks in the armor every single time. Yeah. Hominick, uh, goddamn Mark Hominick, who, who I don't think really want to fight after the Aldo fight, yeah. uh, almost, almost had him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mendez, lit, Mendez lit him up with his six-inch arms. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. If anyone who doesn't like, yeah, Chad, Aldo, then that's the thing that. That makes that fight so interesting between Connor and, and and Aldo for me is that Aldo does not use his reach. I mean, he, he gets he gets in on the inside, he gets clinched, he gets grabbed. Connor yeah. is, is gonna put him at he's he's longer, he's bigger. He's yeah. Aldo's never faced an opponent like Connor. Yeah. No. I don't think anyone's ever faced him except for the people who faced him. Yeah. Um, he, he's gonna it's yeah, I, it's just gonna be a massacre. <laughs> It is, and and I and I think when you face somebody who is hardly ever injured, he's never missed, he's never had to pull out a fight because of an injury, and, yeah. and that and they keep saying that, and Chad keeps saying, oh, you know, you, you I only had three weeks to to train. I mean, most fight camps are anywhere between four to eight. It's not yeah. like he 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 was he was given three days notice. Yeah, but like if it's it's your own fault if you're if you're training in a way that you don't train all year round and you're only doing these camps. So you're basically a part-time fighter, then that's you. That's your comeuppance. That's what you, happens. You know, you and, up, if he was training all year round and that opportunity came up, you know, maybe he would have been a bit more prepared. That's mm -hmm. not that's no one else's fault but his own. So, well, exactly. And you you look at the shape he's in. It's not like this. And I'm sh I'm I'm more than certain that that they train fairly often. But maybe the thing with Team Alpha Male and you know, I could be totally off, but it, maybe they, they only really stay peaked for when a fight is announced. You know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah. And that's, you know, maybe that, maybe that is it. And it does kind of make sense in its own way. Like, so you're not constantly living this kind of monk lifestyle, but if you want to be, if you want to be the best, and Connor definitely wants to be the best. He, he, that's what you got to do. You got to sacrifice everything, and that's what he's doing. Um, you can be a part-time fighter and just get paid whatever wage you want in the UFC and stay down in the rankings, and that's fine. Like you're, you're still a martial artist. You're still doing what you love. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to be the, the champion, then you've got sacrifices to make, and you have to live that lifestyle. Like the only fight Connor really has with himself leading up to a fight, it seems like, is just making sure he makes the weight, which he never has a problem doing. He's never had a terrible wake up to the point where it, it's detrimented his, uh, his his performance. No. And but at one at, at whatever at his walking weight, we're we're saying about one seventy. Yeah, that is almost peak for him, and and that's what's scary. By the time he hits one forty five, he rehydrates. He's prime. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, he's got it nailed. He's got it. He's got it absolutely nailed. Do you um, do you find the weight cut hard for you to make when you try to make middleweight and stuff? Like, what what's the hardest thing for you to cut out of, out of your diet leading up to that? Um, cookies, <laughs> bread, uh, any like all the good stuff. Um, but I don't. I honestly don't have a hard weight cut now. I will have a harder weight cut now that I'm a bit bigger. Um, and that will be definitely interesting, but I won't have to do that now for a while because I'm going in a light heavyweight for this thing in November, and so I don't know. It'll probably be next year by the time I actually have to do the cut. So I'll, I'll have to do it very intelligently. And but I, I honestly don't have a hard weight cut, so I can't talk about a, a hard one. I just I could do it in a week. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. only five kilos, five six kilos max. I just cut out. You know, I, I whittle the carbs down uh, coming up to the. Uh, so I don't, I don't like going cold turkey because I don't think it's good for your body. Yeah. So I'll get smaller, smaller and smaller amounts leading up to the, the last week. And the last week, I'll have very, 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 very small amounts of, of the starches and carbs and stuff. 
um, maybe maybe none, but um, then it's just a, a fast. I do I do like a twenty four hour fast, with, so no food, no fluid, and and some sort of sweat. Like for the last part, I, I did a, a, a like a Bikram yoga session it, during during the weight cut, and that I take that takes up it's mostly water retention for me. So yeah, I, I I was on weight the, like the night before last time, so which is which is crazy. Some some guys are five kilos over the night before. You know what I mean? So I can't talk about a hard weight cut because never, I've never really had one. I'm, I'm assuming I am going to have one now because my metabolism is breaking down and I'm getting a bit heavier. And So I'll let you know in uh, another six months. Well, yeah, no, for sure. I, I would love to get you back on when, when you have a fight really coming up. Now, yeah. now, now the, cha- the European Championships are coming up for you. Um, is yeah. it a one-night tournament, a weekend thing? How does it work? Yeah, I think it's over the space of like a few days. Uh, it's probably going to be three to four fights probably to win the whole thing within that, those few days because um, it's obviously the whole of Europe. So it's going to be interesting. I had a dream last night actually that I rear naked choked uh, all three of them and won the whole thing, uh, which was kind of a nice dream to have. Um, so if it goes like that, I'll be pretty happy. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's over the space of a few days. Like if the guys did it in the Worlds. Like that's where Franz just won the World Championships. Yeah. Uh, I think it was three fights for him. Um, so it's probably three fights. I'm assuming in the space of you know four four days or something like that. I'm, I'm not really sure, but it definitely be an experience, and I can't wait for it. It's something that John wants me to do. Um, basically, like I, I would obviously love to be going pro at this stage. Um, of a good few fights, but I do recognize that I that what I'm doing in training isn't like um transferring to what I'm doing in the cage full in, in the same way that for a lot of other people it is because I'm just for the sake that or for the um, reason that it takes some people longer and like you have guys like like Dylan Stuke he's I think he's only had four fights I'm not sure I'm not 100% sure but he hasn't had he, he's had probably like half the fights that I've had put it that way but he's able to transfer exactly what he does on the mats to the mm-hmm. cage straight away and that's what makes him ready to, to, to turn pro for me there's there's the correlation just isn't there yet it's and but each fight it's more and more and more um but it needs to be you know what you're doing in there is exactly what you're doing in the cage uh, on the night um so for me uh john felt it was best and to just do a few more and this will be knocking three fights out of the park in the space of a few days that will get me up to whatever 11 12 fights whatever it will be and uh, that's probably what i need to be honest um and t- it takes away the pressure of the big crowd and, uh, you know, building, build up to it. Like it's not a show, it's, it's more of a competition style, which kind of, it's like a throwback to my old Taekwondo days, just going in and having, you know, four to five fights in the space of a day and you're there for 12 hours or whatever it is. Well, won't be that intense, but mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Um, there's going to be some big ass guys, um, but uh, I'm working really, I'm going to work my ass off my wrestling and, and my grappling and just try and dominate um, without getting any injuries, so that's the, that's the goal. Well, that's what's so interesting about uh, about something like that. I mean, I, when you look at gyms in Europe, you guys and probably Wolfslayer are the most notable. And okay. there hasn't been a whole lot coming out of Wolfslayer in in a long, long time. I'm not sure what the what the deal is with that. I mean, I know Rampage, Bisping, and Pearson, Daly, and those guys have went through there. Uh, Dan Hardy as well. And, yeah. and, and that that's something that's interesting because we're going to be – the, whoever ends up winning in each weight class could be the first guy who eventually gets into the UFC from their gym. I mean, and, that, and that's yeah. what's so cool about Europe right now is that it, it's 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 huge over there. Like, it, it is – there's a, there's so many competitors. There's so many gyms over there. But yeah. you guys are, in many ways, the, the staple, the premier gym. Yeah, out, out of the, You know? Yeah, one hundred percent. And do you think that adds a lot of pressure to you being from? Do you think that adds pressure to you from being from SPG? Because I know for myself, when I compete, it it adds a very healthy pressure. Yeah, um, I kind of felt it for my first few fights. Like I felt like I had to, you know, live up to the name, I suppose. But not so much anymore. I don't know. Um. I don't really think about it, to be honest. Uh, I'm not going to try and make up an answer. I don't. I don't really think about it as much anymore. It's more about what I personally am doing. I know, obviously, I want to represent the club in the best way I possibly can, and I, and I will always do my best on the night. Like I'm, I'm not known to not, uh, you know, not 
give give my all. Um, so I'll always leave it all in there, and I think that's the, kind of the spirit of SPG. Mm-hmm. So as long as like as long as I'm doing that, I'm not really worried about the outcome. Um, like I said, like I'm always saying this, and and it's it's people like maybe may think that I'm I'm bullshit and whatever, but I really like winning and losing just really don't matter. Uh, it's not going to matter when I'm when I'm when I'm looking back. I'm, all I'm going to remember is the experiences and and just I feel so privileged to be to have the ability to even do do this, like uh, to be able bodied enough to do it. When you look at the amount of people who probably would love to be in our position, um, or you, even the people in the around other parts of Ireland that would kill to be in in our gym. So I just feel really really privileged to just to be getting in there. So whether I obviously everyone wants to win. Um, it's just the nature of the sport, and that the winners kind of move move on. And but I don't know. I'm kind of on a different. I wouldn't maybe more of a more peaceful mindset with it lately. Uh, I'm kind of I'm, I'm I'm okay with what whatever happens as long as I give everything that I have. Um, what else can I do? It's all that I control. All that I can control is is how how much effort I give and. So kind of going a bit of a rant now, kind of. No, down. no, I it, it's it's. I mean, you're a very thoughtful person, and, and this is something I've noticed. I think what I'm seeing, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like before you put a lot more uh, thoughts on the fights prior, but it seems like now that you are slowly and slowly losing those, the the those confusing thoughts, those 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 multiple different outcome thoughts, and now you're kind of just you're just doing it. You're not. You're yeah. not overthinking it. You're not over hyping it. You're not over. You know what I mean. You're you you're 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 putting it through the strainer each fight, and you're getting yeah. to this more just. Yeah. It's a fight. There's a winner. Yeah. There's a loser, and yeah. I can be either one of those. Yeah, and I'm and I'm figuring out. Yeah, it's it's all about figuring out what what works for you, and that's what I was going back to what I said earlier about some people get it faster than others. They figure out what works for them really fast, whereas it's not. It hasn't been as fast for me. And now I keep, I keep saying this now, like my approach to fights is I just want to do my techniques. I just want to, I just want to do the techniques that I've been taught and expert and see if they work in, 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 in the highest, you know, tense, tensity kind of experience possible. Um, let's see if these techniques work. Well, yeah. no, for sure. And, 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 and you were speaking before it's, uh, for me, it, it's, it's, when I when I was saying that there's a pressure, it's more of just because my biggest fear is to ever go on the mats or, or inside a ring, a cage, whatever it is, and, and, yeah. and not give my best. Not even yeah. if, if hey, if I have a bad performance, it's more of my effort. Did I really? Did I try to get up a hunt when I was on the bottom? Did I really? Did I quit yeah. or did I try to get my ass up? And you know what? And if I got to learn the technique better to get up. Uh, yeah. Like stand up. That's fine. But if yeah. I was, if I'm just laying there and waiting for the ref to save me, yeah, that's something that would crush. And, and and that's something that in 20 years, I would be like, fuck. I wish I hadn't just quit there. Yeah. And yeah. And I've had those. And that's where I would always say that I wouldn't do that. Like I've had those situations, like in that four man tournament that I did the second fight. I was. It was like the end. It was like it was probably about 30 seconds from the end of the third round and when I was fighting the rear naked choke and just went to sleep. Um, but I wasn't, you know, I, I'd much rather go to sleep than, than, you know, give up or, mm-hmm. uh, I know it's kind of, it kind of sounds a bit bad. I wouldn't do the same thing with my arm or my leg, but going to sleep isn't the worst thing that can happen. So no, for sure. And, and, and as long as you're fighting to the bitter end, because there is, there is a chance that his grip slips, but with an arm, it's like, uh, I don't want a broken arm because then I'm going to yeah. lose so much time on the mats. Yeah, no, you don't want to mess around with that shit. It's not worth it. It's it's like it's like people at jujitsu tournaments at white and blue belt when their arms get broken or are playing that long. It's like, buddy, yeah. you have maybe two other matches today, and you now you're going to be on the shelf for over yeah. a month for what? Yeah, and this and that same um, th- method of thinking is what what you need to apply to the or what I think people need to apply to fights and ge- like MMA fights. In that, it's okay if I don't take this fight next Saturday. That everyone wants to be, would be really cool if I took it. Obviously, people would, would you know acknowledge me for taking a fight on short notice. And but you know what? Think about the long game a bit more. You know, it, am I have I been training enough? Um, how's my nutrition? How, how's my fitness levels? 
you know, am I, maybe I got a bad knock in training last week and have I recovered from that? You know, don't try not to fool yourself and just take intelligent fights. And yeah, if, if, you, if you're, I don't know, some people are never going to do that. But mm-hmm. I, I, for me, for me, that's, that's the path. Um, it's just really, really taking or making intelligent decisions and um, enjoying it. Just, just enjoying it. Well, that's the thing. I'm, uh, I'm one of those kind of people who might get a wrap around with some of my friends in training and stuff as someone who's always down to go. And I, and I, and in, in many ways I am, but in some ways I've, I've had some nagging injuries. I've, I had a, a strained, a strained knee as well as a bad hip injury this year. That I, I mean, I didn't make mention of it. I still train, but I would, I'm if I'm able to train through it. I'm not going to go on the mats in a competition and, and, and injure it so I can lose that time. I would rather yeah. just slowly take it, recover, see how it is. But, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I, if I'm going to do competitions in jiu-jitsu six, seven, eight times a year, I thought yeah. this year, you know what, let's just let's just focus more on our technique because the goal is for me to eventually get in the cage, fight, and then fucking be a, a goddamn rock star, okay? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's the dream. That's the dream. You know, and and the the path is always like that. It, it's it's being aware of injuries. It's not every day you goddamn ride your body to to your you know your red line again. You're at optimal peak every goddamn second because eventually all the gears, all the cylinders, everything's going to explode on that bitch. Yeah, and pa- like Paddy gave me some good advice in that in that respect. He, he told me just as long as one hour a day you're fighting, he said that's all you need. Mm-hmm. So no matter no matter what you're doing you, you like do your whatever your life sessions but for one hour if you're just literally fighting you're trying to win not like obviously trying to uh like kick the shit out of your your teammates but you're trying to win for an hour you're trying you're trying to win and you, and if you can do that for an hour a day then then you're going to be in the, in the right mindset and then mm-hmm. and then you're not, you're not doing like three of those a day where you're pushing your body and you're going to burn yourself out and four months down the line you're gonna because i've done that I've been that guy who's who's trained three times a day, and just because you, you think more is more, and and it's easy to get caught up in that, but you, you need to train like people are saying a lot more lately. Is you need to train smarter, not harder. Well, um, I mean, and Randy Couture was huge on that. He used to he used to train, I think, maybe two hours an evening, uh, uh, closer and the later on the latter years of his career. And people yeah. be like, you don't train eight hours a day. And it's like, no, nobody really trains eight hours a day. And if they do, their bodies are in such miserable shape. Yeah, and their minds will be in miserable shape as well. They just don't want to... Well, know. yeah, I mean, you, you got to enjoy, you know, an, an unhealthy meal once or, tw- you know, once, uh, you know, and I think Rob Wolf, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of him. Yeah. Um, big paleo, have it. Yes, big paleo guy. And he says, you know, if I eat 17 of my 20 meals are healthy as shit, but I, I, I still have my cheat meals here and there, you know, yeah. that's, you know, that's damn good. I, I, I'm, I'm not a monk. I'm not going, you know, I, I can't kill myself for optimal nutrition every single time. And it's, it's the same with training. It's like, if you train, let's say 15 hours a week, if, if, if five to six of those are your hard hours, you're yeah. still going to learn the entire time, but you're going to have those, those sessions where you're really pushing yourself. Yeah, exactly, and and then sometimes it is just better to just go and you know kind of play around and, and hit the bag a bit and just experiment and you know not get hurt and not be fighting for your life kind of thing. It's yeah, it's it's having realistic expectations, which is why a lot of people fail in anything in life. They they set these these, these kind of unrealistic expectations where I'm going to go to the gym six days a week starting tomorrow, and then what happens? You don't go to second day and you feel like you failed. Whereas if you had it said, I'll train once a week. And you do that once, and maybe you go twice, and then that in that second time you went, instead of being, you know, the only two out of six, this is an extra bonus, and you and you 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 know you're rewarding yourself rather. You can apply that the same to training. You can, you know, I'm gonna do my one hour a day, and and then do, and then every extra session after that, you'll feel great about doing it, and and you know, instead of punishing yourself for not doing three hours a day hard you're rewarding yourself for doing one extra, you know, technique class maybe that night or something after your one hour of, of hard sparring or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And I, and I want to watch Connor train and Connor being the elite athlete that he is, he's a, you know, he is a world-class UFC fighter. And, and when you watch him train, a lot of the shit he's doing has nothing to do with working against resistance rather than working himself. He, he, yeah. He's not always in there uh, uh, sparring and, and doing shit like that all the time. Sometimes he's just, Going up the dip, up and down the mats in the lowest squat position he can with the most fluidity, 
You know what I mean? Like just simple things like that. Yeah. He's all about that because that's what it's that's what it's about. Like it's I don't know. It's it's make it's more playing. fantasy. Yeah. Like look at Gunny. I don't know if you've seen Gunny train, but mm-hmm. he pretty much only does what he does in his fights and nothing else, nothing extra. You don't like. I think people complicate it, and now I can't speak because I'm not, you know, really successful. I'm not Connor. I'm not a really successful fighter. But yes. Like from what I can see, it's and what I'm my understanding now after like a, a bit of time doing it is that it's it's not so much about what you can add. It's what it's what you can take away and and just be left with what's important mm-hmm. and just focus on those things and doing them really really well instead of doing you know fifty things kind of okay just doing 10 things or five things really really well and you'll get that like the same in jiu-jitsu like tom you know tom king uh you yeah. know that dude like he's he's a serious black belt but he you know he, he he's not you know doing baron bolos up and up and down the mat and all these kind of rolling back takes and stuff he, he does the, he does the same thing that you know he's gonna do but you can't stop it and he and he has these five or ten things um not to limit him, I'm not sure. Maybe it's maybe it's more. No, but he, it's the, but it's the truth. And, and Matt Thorne was saying too. He goes, y- you know, a white belt drew that goddamn picture of a black belt, a Swiss Army knife with twenty thousand different accessories. He's like, no, yeah. you're going to do your, you're going to do, you're going to do your guard pass, your option two. Yeah. You're going to get yeah. to your side control, your mount, and then yeah. you're, you're going to work your, your your series. Like right now, I, I'm I'm very much working, especially in the gi and, and no gi. I'm working. Yeah. From the Kimura. that's where that's personality where I feel yeah. like that's you know if 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 I was to ever cheat on my beautiful girlfriend, it would be with the Kimura because I love it so much. It's it's that yeah. amazing. It's my favorite thing to do because, and right now I'm just trying to find so many different pathways of where I could lead it to without having to overcomplicate it. But the core essence of it, of what I'm developing, is just the Kimura. It's just a simple cop lock that we've seen since we were little kids without even knowing what the hell the name was. Yeah. yeah. It's like putting your arm behind your back kind of thing. Yeah. It's like a, you know, it's, yeah. it's that simple. It's, it's, that's all I, I, I try to do. But then again, I'll try shit that I've seen from like pro wrestling just yeah. to see if it works, just to, just to, to find different pathways. Yeah, to put, feel. You know, mm. I, I, there's a lot of that. Like you feel something like I'll see something and I'll feel it out. And if I don't feel comfortable with it, I'll forget about it. And that's it. Like there's a few things that I and then and then if if it does feel good, I'll try it a bit more and experiment. And if it's effective, um, then then I will. That's something that I'll do all the time. And that's the way that that John operates as well. Um, he doesn't, you know, he, for a technique for him to deem a tech technique effective, he needs to see evidence of it working in in real situations. Um, so if you just apply that to everything you do, only use stuff that's useful. Just like. Sure, Bruce Lee's been saying it for for years. You know, to take take what is useful and discard the rest. So, mm-hmm. well, yeah. it's like John with the guillotine. John, we all ninety five percent to ninety eight percent of John's rules probably end with him guillotining your ass. Yep. Yeah. And it's finding those different pathways. It's like Ronda Rousey with the armbar. Ronda yeah. Rousey's armbar is the same armbar she always does, but she yeah. has. 10 million pathways to get there. She's always yeah. finding a way to get there that nobody can keep up with. Yeah, and then and she doesn't need anything else. No, no. You, you don't need anything else, though. But why, the amazing... why would she go? Why would she go and learn, you know, uh, how, how to barambola or single leg X guard and all this, or 50-50? What, what's the point? Because she gets the job done with, with, the, with the few, um, you know, effective techniques that she has. So there's... I mean, Joe Rogan just had her on the podcast just the other day, and, and she was talking about footlocks, and they were bringing up the fact of how many footlocks were happening at the uh, the last uh, Abu Dhabi that just happened, um, uh, the ADCC. And she was like, no, that's not my thing. I, I, I do arm bars yeah. because I'm on top. If I do footlocks, I, I, I'm away from the body. She goes, I, that's just not what I do, as effective as they are. And she knows they're effective because there's proof, yeah. you know, the, science, the, the evidence is there. Um, yeah. But... That's her thing. She's it's an arm bar. It's like, you know, it's like trying to tell Nick Diaz, hey Nick, you should do spinning back kicks. It's like, no, yeah. Nick, Nick's a boxer. He's gonna yeah. pressure you, he's gonna throw a thousand punches at you and break you yeah. down. Then he'll submit you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now there's the something that's really interesting that you've started and you've been writing for a long time. Like 
obviously oh, no. been writing for a while. But yeah. this blog you started, a blog about you, and, and I kind of stole the premise of, of, of that for this podcast because I wanted to interview friends uh, and, and people that yeah. are not just jiu-jitsu and MMA-based, but unfortunately in this yeah. life, that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of the majority of the people you meet based on the common interest, and I'm trying to expand yeah. too much from there. Tell us about the idea, and just tell us about the blog that you started. Yeah, so, yeah, the idea came about, I was just looking for something that, that didn't involve receiving something, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, all, like, it's a lot of this game, I, I'm, I say this game like I'm, like I'm deep embedded in it, but I'm really not. But a lot of it is like you know, looking for stuff, looking for uh, you know the next the next fight, and looking for sponsors, and looking for attention, and looking for this and people to you know notice you and all this kind of stuff. And it's just not. I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted I wanted to you know be the guy giving giving something out. So I was like, what can I do? And then literally like an epiphany moment, I was driving to because I got this new job where I'm like driving around the country all the time. So I, I was driving and I just had this idea where I thought, why don't I just, you know, ask people if they think that I can help them. And if, if they do, maybe I'll write about it. Could could make for an interesting, um, in, interesting for people to read. So so I did it. I put out a video like literally an hour after I had the idea on Facebook. And then the, the response was just insanity. Um, just so many shares and so many messages from people in the US and, and Canada and stuff asking me to do it over Skype and stuff. I was like, what is going on? Um, so I was completely overwhelmed with, with everything. Uh, and then, you know, I wasn't sure about doing it when I put out the video. And then as soon as I got the responses back, I was like, yeah, I'm doing this. Um, so that's it. Yeah. Then I just, I, I got my, my girlfriend to pick the, the people who were going to participate so there wouldn't be any bias. And you know, one of them dropped out. It was a bit of like, it's kind of been a while since I, since I um, put out the idea, but it was a bit, a bit of messy, like trying to figure out things. How's it going to work? Uh, someone dropped out and I replaced them with someone else. And I didn't take into the equation. Sometimes it takes a lot of time to write stuff. Uh, sometimes it doesn't just come straight to your head. Like the original idea was to write uh, 12 pieces over 12 weeks and, you know, kind of meet uh, each person four times. Um, but then I'm kind of just, it does, I don't work well under those situations, like under timelines. So now it's turned into, I'm going to write these pieces when I feel like they're done, they'll be out. And uh, when I feel like they do them justice. And um, although I'll be meeting the people over the 12 weeks, maybe the pieces will come out a bit more sporadically. But, but I will see. But it's that's something I'm really enjoying. Um, definitely teaching me a lot about myself. Yeah, no, for sure. It's 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 something that I, I think a lot of people uh, don't understand about martial artists, and, and and I hate saying that word because it sounds kind of like uh, uh, mystic woo woo kind of bullshit. But it, but in many ways, I think that's what makes a true martial artist, and I think that's something that a lot of elite coaches, when they when they promote somebody, is looking for somebody who 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 wants to help others more than just be selfish. But when you're a fighter, you kind of have to be selfish in many ways. And that's why I thought was so inspiring about this. Yeah, 100% you have to be selfish. And that's why it's, it's, that's why it's, and that's what I was kind of getting sick of, you know, it's not, to be honest, the whole, even the, even the persona I was trying to um, get across, like in last year when I was looking for fights, it's not me. Like it really, the only reason I was doing it was to get fights. And I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, pinpointing anyone at all like if you notice any of my tweets or things i never said i want to fight this guy because he's this or that i always just said i want to fight and um, because it's not really my, my my personality to be calling people out because I, I love everyone like I'm, I'm 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 just trying to be friends with everyone <laughs> it's kind of a yeah, hard you, task you, you're, you're never you mean you're never personally i mean every time that you have you've had a loss uh, or, or a setback you you seem like the, the, the one of those people and and you are that you you never ever blame the outcome on the other person, or you never chalk up some bullshit uh, uh, excuse. And 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 I fucking hate it when pe I, uh, you're allowed to swear. By the way, I'm a swearer sometimes, but I hate <laughs> it when I hate it when people have these these long winded posts on Facebook or, or or a tweet about why they lost, rather than just saying, yeah. you know what, the guy beat me. He I made you know. My mistake, which is what happens, is when you make a mistake, the opponent takes the opportunity that's given yeah. before that comes before them and capitalizes on that. But you'll have yeah. people be like, "Oh, you know, my knee gave out," and you know, yeah. it's like, "Well, you got tapped with a rear naked choke." 
Yeah. I mean, it's like you it's lost. Like, Just say I don't say anything if you have nothing positive to say about the other yeah. person. You got beat. Screw it. Move on to the next one. You know. Yeah. And which, yeah, I think I put up something like that, and, and I think John wrote underneath that's that's the best post fight kind of an um uh, what's the word I'm looking for analysis, analysis. that yeah, yeah. that he's seen because I was just like uh oh kind of made a mistake let's fix it um that's what happens that, that's how a fight ends is you capitalize on a mistake or you create an opportunity yeah. you know what I mean it it, it it's that simple it, it it's not like you know, yeah. uh, you know my my the, and Gary Tonin. Uh, you ever watch? I mean, you, you ever seen his jujitsu? Uh, I have uh, briefly. He's one of the most. Uh, uh, Good. Uh, he's, okay. one the, he's one of the he's one of the few exemplary um, uh, art artists today in, in jujitsu. He's always exciting. But either way, he said, if 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 because I ate a cheeseburger the week prior, this is the reason I lost this jujitsu match. My jujitsu yeah. shit. The cheeseburger is not going to make you lose a fight, and it's it's yeah. it's it's you know what I mean. Maybe if you missed weight, yeah, that yeah. cheeseburger was a bad idea. Yeah. But Where's if a cheese, yeah, if it's ten days out and you ate a cheeseburger and you still can't make weight, it's not like yeah. those five hundred grams of, of of calorie or five hundred calories or whatever. Yeah. Are, you're are not going to put ten pounds on you. Yeah, exactly. It's it, everyone like. I suppose I can I can understand it. I don't I don't knock the people for a lot of people just look for excuses and stuff but that's just not it's not what I think is constructive um and it's not what I would want to do for myself but no, that's just 100%. what Yeah, that's just what some people do and that's just them and I I try not to look for excuses but that being said sometimes excuses are all that a fighter has for them to believe that the next time they can be better. Mm -hmm. So if without excuses some sort of excuse. Now I know there's a difference. There's a line between bullshit excuses and real excuses. Um, well, like, more like as in your excuse is I didn't train hard enough, rather than oh my my knee was sore. I ate a cheeseburger. Like just did like sometimes real real excuses fighters need. I think because then we we need something to believe that the next time we we can pull it out of the bag and and and, and be better. And otherwise we we just be like. Oh, maybe we're just fucking shit at this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we need no, to. No, I mean you, you, you got you, you got to lie to yourself in some ways to to you know what I mean? Yeah. You're 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 as a fighter, as a competitor, as someone who does this and really wants to to do something with it at a higher level than just you know being a, a weekend warrior. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you're you're gonna be your your own your own biggest fan. You're also gonna yeah. be your own biggest critic. You're going to be your yeah. own, you know what I mean? You're going to be your own, you know, uh, uh, keyboard warrior against yourself. Yeah, exactly. You have to be. Um, but, yeah, as far as bullshit excuses like that go, yeah, just save them. Just There's no point even typing them open. You know, I think after one of my, not my last fight, fight before, I fought a light heavyweight and got uh, got dropped. Fight, fight, so like a TKO finish. I think I only wrote, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> that that, I mean, my, what, that what, what, what else, you, what else can you say? Yeah. That's, that, and, that was and, it. I was like, you know, I fucked up. If yeah. I didn't get punched with that, if I didn't get hit with that punch, I would still be fighting. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what, what, what can you say? It, it happens. Yeah. That's the reality of fighting. You know, for animals, it's life and death. For us, they, you know, thankfully inside a cage, there's yeah. a referee who's going to save us. Hopefully, you know, if you're not Mazagotti. Yeah. So okay, so where where can people read up on this blog, and when are you gonna have another entry with uh, your latest person you're working with, Fiona? Is that that's the name, correct? That's Fiona, yeah. So that's ne the next entry is going to be another guy, uh, Edward. So I'm going to go do like, you know, w three people. So I'm going to go one by one. So mm -hmm. I did Fiona there last week. So it'll be Edward. And then I've got Jeff, who actually trains in SPG. Um, so yeah, it's interesting with him. Um, he's really, really pushing towards doing the Irish Open and stuff. So um, just doing some training with him. And uh, he's a really good guy. He's really putting in the work. Um, so I, I wanted to do it with him. Um, the next one, hopefully, will be sometime tomorrow. Um, now that's not a that's not a promise. Like I said, yeah. I, I like to take my, I like to take my time with pieces, but uh, this, this in the next few days for sure. Sweet uh, with, with Edward, and yeah, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a really cool dude, and you'll read a lot about him. And he's a very interesting guy, who uh, you know could potentially I think will end up being like a you know a long term friend because he's. We have the same kind of thinking in the same way you, you would really get on with them as well. You've got the same kind of thinking. Um, awesome. Like I, I, like I said, I'm very interested. I will keep obviously promoting. So how about 
How about we take some time now? We, we, we've been talking for a while. I think I, I hope everyone has continued listening to, to our podcast because I, I think at times, if, unless you knew the, the, the language we were speaking, I think yeah. you might have gone lost, but you know. So, yeah. so Ben, wh- how about you give us some of your sponsors, some of the links, and, and then remind us once again where you'll be fighting next. Um, sponsors. So I've got um, Haga, obviously, which you have on your head. Uh, awesome guy, Brian. Um, love that dude. He's mm-hmm. so nice. Uh, I think he's going to be making some shorts for Europeans, which uh, uh, that dude is. That dude is. He's really nice. Really, really nice. I hope we get to so, visit him. So one giving. Day. So giving. Yeah, and then we have Powerful.ie, which is uh, the Onnit distributors for Onnit in Ireland. Uh, I've been with them since the start, and uh, again, love those guys. Um, what else have I got? Impact Gum Shields. I'm doing my custom Gum Shields. This guy, um, James, they're really good, so you can check them out. Really cheap as well, like 50 euro. I don't know if that's, uh, if that, I don't know, I'm not sure what that is in dollars, but 50 euros for a custom Gum Shield is pretty cheap. Canadian Canadian dollars. That's that. That for us, we suck. Our dollar does not do well anywhere except for maybe in Australia. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. No. Yeah. And and once again, where are the um? Where's these MMA trials? Where 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 is it again? Trials are on. Trials are on in in uh, SPG. I think October 11th or somewhere in the middle of October. And then the actual competition is is uh, in Birmingham. Uh, in the UK, uh, late November, I believe. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure of the dates. I can't really remember, but um, yeah, no, it's good. Um, you'll see, you'll see a lot, uh, a lot of stuff uh, coming up soon. Actually, the, the the blog gave me an idea to do something that I that uh, something bigger that, that we're working on now. Um, I've kind of I've put together a team of uh, developers. We're developing kind of a, a platform that I that I think will change the way people learn. Um, I think it will change the way the world learns. Um, it's, it's, it's something big that we're working on, um, and I'm really, really excited about it. In the same spirit as the blog, um, but on a much larger scale. Uh, it's called Upskill. Is going to be the name of the platform, and uh, you'll be hearing a lot about that uh, in, in the next while. It's something. It's keeping me up at night right now, and it's. You gotta you, keep, keep me posted on that, and, and then uh, as soon as you get that launched, and we will hopefully maybe after the trials and stuff like that, we'll have you back on so we can keep a an update on that as well as the about you blog. Yeah, it's gonna be good. So yeah, a blog about you with the letter u dot wordpress dot com because I'm too stingy to buy the dot com um, is where you can find that, uh, or else my one is into the fray mma at wordpress dot com or dot wordpress dot com. We'll post um, the links. More, we'll post the links. Yeah, it's, it's all good. Just you don't need them. It's fine. You'll you'll hear you'll hear from me. Maybe add me on Facebook. That that's cooler. Just be my friend, and uh, you'll see everything that you need to see. And maybe we can uh, learn some stuff from each other. Yeah. Perfect. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the conclusion of episode three with Ben Forsyth. I'd like to yeah. thank Strike Fightwear, Haga, as well as everyone at www.sbgtoronto.com. Ben, you are awesome. Ladies, yeah. sorry he is taken, and men, he is not willing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was good talking to you. All right, man. We'll chat soon, and stay healthy, stay awesome, and we'll talk soon. Yeah, peace out, brother. Thanks, brother. Bye. Awesome. See ya.